Well, Kamisa Kamara is from the National Endowment for Democracy. She joins us now live from Washington for more on what's happening in Gabon. Thanks for joining us. Give us some context here first and tell us how free and fair you think this election actually was to begin with. Well, the elections took place uh, on Saturday and um, looking at the different election observation mission uh, reports, uh, it looks like the elections were not free and fair um, and they were, they were marred by, by fraud. Okay, so if... That is what we're hearing from the ground. Okay. Now, if Ali Bongo then refuses to accept anything less than an all-out victory, what will happen in Gabon? Well, he... Um, officially won the election. Uh, this is what the Electoral Commission said. This is what the Ministry uh, of Interior said. Uh, he will definitely not um, uh, come back and, and uh, accept defeat. Um, I think that it's very difficult to predict what is going to happen. But uh, Gabon in a, is in a very uh, difficult situation right now with a lot of protests. Uh, there are at least three uh, dead and multiple wounded um, uh, throughout the country. And over a thousand people were arrested uh, since yesterday. And do you fear this violence could descend into something worse? It is always possible. Um, I'm hoping it's, it's not the case. Really what President uh, Ali Bongo will have to do is really reach out to the opposition and make sure that they are part of his new government. That's really the best case scenario. And, and what are the chances of that happening? Perhaps looking at a power sharing option. Could that work in the context of Gabon and in the context of a family basically that's been in power for 50 years? Um, I think, again, it is the best case scenario. Um, I don't think that the president will have a choice but to reach out to the opposition and, and, and work with them. Um, as you recall, in, back in 2009 when he was elected, uh, there, were violence, uh, in the, there was violence in the country. Uh, right now it is a repeat of what happened in 2009. So I think that in order for Gabon to go back to peace, Ali Bongo will have um, uh, to uh, use that, that influence that he has and make sure that the opposition is okay uh, with his new government. Kamisa, uh, tell us what you can about the Bongo family. I don't want to call it a dynasty, but after 50 years, you almost feel that is the case. What kind of rulers it, have they been? It almost feels like... So um, Ali Bongo's father uh, took uh, over uh, in the late 1960s. Um, he was an autocrat. I mean, he was the longest serving president of, of Africa for a very long time. Um, Gabon has always been a, a rich country, uh, thanks to its oil. And um, the, the father, Ali Bongo's father, was able to uh, set up a system of, um, um, uh, I would say, of, of people who were very close to him and dependent on his money. And what Ali Bongo has tried to do was to um, move away from, from his uh, father's rule, but it, it has been very difficult for him. And I think that what Gabonese uh, people want now is, is a change. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, the Bongo dynasty will continue for seven years okay. longer. Kamisa Kamara, thank you so much for joining us there from Washington.